The message you are about to listen to is from the Household of David Mercy Conference 2023, themed Light. As you listen, the entrance of God's Word will bring light and understanding to you. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Shout a loud and a big, a big, a big, a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for a few minutes. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll pray for a few minutes and this is a cry from heaven to open up our hearts to receive because there is always more for the one who is hungry. The Bible says at the last day of the feast, you would think because it was the last day, there shouldn't be hunger again. Yet Jesus' sermon on the last day of the feast is that to whoever is still hungry, that there is still room, you can still come. Hallelujah. So in the next few minutes, I want you with dedicated attention, cry unto God and ask him for an encounter. Pray in the spirit, pray with your heart open. Grant us access to light. Someone is praying, blessing him from the depth of your heart. Blessings and honor, glory and power be unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Is someone praying? More of your power, more of your glory, more of your light upon my spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Yes, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh Sing it one more time We look to Yahweh, to Yahweh Yahweh Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord we look to Yahweh Yahweh Hallelujah. Let your light shine upon our hearts, O God. Let your light shine upon our destinies, O God. Do us good tonight. Let Jesus be glorified. For in Jesus' much less name we pray. God bless you. Please give Jesus a hand clap and then be seated. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Every encounter with the Holy Spirit and every encounter with the Word of God is for the lifting, the rising, and the excelling of the saints. 
there is no genuine encounter with the spirit of god there is no genuine encounter with the word of god that leaves the saints at the same level hallelujah the bible says now the lord is that spirit and he says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then he says we all with faces unveiled beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed from glory to glory if it is the spirit of god even through his word there must be growth there must be transformation hallelujah i was sharing very briefly with a pastor shola the office before we came that while i was leaving the hotel to come i began to sense that among the many things the holy spirit will be doing within the time that we have is that while the word is coming there is going to be very strong impartations and activations you know what it means to activate to activate means to make what is there but is not yet visible to come alive and the bible says the assignment of light among other things is to make manifest that means that when you are in an atmosphere where the light of god is there are activations graces giftings capacities in the spirit hallelujah yes so you must be very sensitive as the word of god comes what you are receiving is beyond an information ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 he says and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet the spirit entered not just an information entered an information entering is lecture a spirit entering is revelation that quickens hallelujah praise the name of the lord so i'll just charge our hearts as we trust god for grace i really desire it's been a burden and it's been my prayer to god that believers will get to a point where we appreciate the atmosphere and the ministry of the holy spirit i submit to you that in as much as we have experienced the charismatism around the things of god i think believers corporately are yet to fully appreciate what the holy spirit in partnership with the word of god is able to do and produce out of a believer and so that we maximize conferences like this we must be very intentional about receiving and preparing our hearts to be imparted there are realms and there are dimensions that you must be able to access in order to reveal certain possibilities of the kingdom the possibilities of the kingdom are not revealed at every level no one time the disciples were given the liberty to pray for one who had a spirit who was convulsing they did the best that they knew to do they prayed they spoke and nothing happened jesus returned from the mount of uh transfer transfiguration and then he met a case already on ground and he drove out that demon and the the, the, the disciples were were saddened by the fact that prayer was there confession was there but there was no result and they asked jesus what did we do wrong because as far as we know it is not just what you say it is the realm from which you are standing to speak from gabriel said i am gabriel that standeth in the presence of god it is not just what i am saying so you can say something at a realm and not experience certain possibilities not because what you are saying is wrong the dimension from which you are standing there needs to be an upgrade in the spirit to give you power and substance to your speaking so you can say be healed you can say be lifted and the truth is that every realm has the possibilities that they produce you cannot want the possibilities of a higher realm from your current realm it would not work that way so for many of us, God brought us to this feast of light so that uh, not necessarily to change what you are saying, but to elevate you to a higher spiritual pedestal where you can now say those things with greater strength 
and power and see God move in dimensions you see if our father and the Lord Baba Deboye comes here he will say the same thing you have been saying God bless you you said it many times from morning till night and yet someone will come from a realm a dimension and say the same God bless you and the realm of the spirit will react in a way that did not happen to you may you rise tonight in the name of Jesus this is my prophetic word for you already in the name that is above all names every dimension where you have come for a long time may tonight stretch and shift you to higher pedestals that at the end of this conference even this session tonight it will be clear with a note of victory in the spirit that there has been an elevation in the name of jesus christ your words will no longer be empty and barren it will not just be a sounding symbol that your word will carry potent power in the realm of the spirit known by angels and known by demons may that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ hallelujah isaiah chapter 60 let's look at a few scriptures let's see how far god will help us this is a very deep subject the subject of light and we can come here even for a whole month trying to exhaust the riches that are contained in this concept for in the understanding of it holds the true potential for the believers dominion our dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon our access to light and our understanding of the same isaiah 60 verse 1 we're going to read 1 to 3 then we'll please jump to 19 and 20. it says arise shine for your light has come shout a loud amen. amen and the glory of the lord is risen upon you verse 2 says for darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people but the lord shall arise over you and his glory shall be seen upon you i love verse 3 it says and gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising now listen carefully to verse 19 give us 19 the sun shall no more shall be no more thy light by day neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee but the lord shall be unto you an everlasting light listen <laughs> do you know what this means when the bible says the sun shall no longer it doesn't mean you will not need the sun and the moon this is a very strong spiritual communication he means he, he means here that the vacillation that comes with day and night once it is night there are many things you cannot do you will have to wait until the sun rises again he says that through light you are going to access a technology that for you it will neither be day nor night again are we together now yes there are things when the sun is your light whatever the sun provides once it is night you have to be patient for at least 12 hours now he's saying you will not need that technology of having to wait and then it comes having to wait you will outsource a system in the spirit by light where even when it is darkness like it was in egypt for you in goshen it is going to be light perpetually he says the lord shall be unto thee not unto everybody an everlasting light and thy god thy glory verse 20 says thy people is that 20 not 21 20 please 20 it says thy son not the son thy son shall no more go down you see what you he's he's giving perspective to verse 19 neither shall thy moon withdraw itself for the lord shall be thine everlasting light and the days of thy morning because you see morning weeping and night are related the bible says for as long as there is no light for as long as it is not day weeping endures 
but joy comes with the morning hallelujah and i'm sure you know by now that in the economy of the kingdom it is not the chronological passage of time that defines day and night it is the presence or the absence of light the bible says he called the light day and the darkness he called night not he called a time period from 6 a.m in the morning till 6 p.m he called the light day provided there is light in the spirit it is called day even if it's 12 midnight and the darkness he called night even if it is 12 noon if it is darkness for you in the spirit you are in the night are we together now so it is not the chronological passage of time that defines light and day in the spirit it is light and day is measured with respect to the presence or the absence of light you can wake up in the morning yet in the realm of the spirit it has not been registered that it is morning you can be walking in broad daylight yet your experience is that of someone who is walking in darkness because the bible says he that has light does not stumble there is a level of accuracy that comes into the life of the believer when you truly access light please listen carefully are we together now so learn this already that it is not in the economy of the kingdom it is not the chronological passage of time that defines day or night it is the presence or the absence of light so that you can tell someone good morning good afternoon that is just a that is just an expression from the earth realm in the realm of the spirit it is the degree to which you have accessed and sustained light that makes it day once there is light it is called day so changing your night to morning or changing night to day is not about waiting until time passes your access to light can automatically turn night to day someone's night is changing changing permanently it then means if day and night in the spirit is not governed by time it is possible to throw away night permanently because for as long as light remains the phenomenon of night can never catch up with you again that's what it meant that the sun shall no longer be your light or moon that means the vacillations between day and night you can you can throw away that phenomenon so that the lord himself i think it's psalm 27 and verse 1 he says the lord is my light and my salvation the lord will be your everlasting light because there is no shadow there is no variableness in him so there is no vacillation there is consistency when the lord becomes your light you do not go through the weaknesses of sun and moon again you don't have to oscillate day and night not in your life not in your experience that is the reason why when men are saying there is a casting down because you are operating from another kind of economy you will say there is a lifting up and you are not lying because the lord has become your light and with it your salvation hallelujah this is a kingdom that functions primarily by light now please let me just do a little introduction in this kingdom when you come when you begin the faith life the faith process your first encounter is jesus christ the son of the living god this is very elementary but it's important that i state it jesus is the only way to the father not one of the ways to the father if for any reason you enter the kingdom through another route then it was not the kingdom you got into jesus said i am the door door means the authorized access point and he also said i am the way no man cometh to the father except by me is that true jesus is also the mystery that we call the key to the kingdom there is only one key to the kingdom jesus then when you are in the kingdom there are the keys of the kingdom are we together now the key that ushers you into the kingdom is jesus then when you are in the kingdom you now have access to the keys of the kingdom 
right so when you encounter jesus the son of the living god the bible tells us among the many things that are given to you is access to the life of god and the bible says that life was the light of men are we together now that that life john chapter 1 was the light of men so you have access to jesus who says he's the light and then access to the ministry of the holy spirit then the journey begins but you see in this kingdom having that initial salvation experience listen carefully it only opens you up to the potential of living a victorious life it does not necessarily mean that from that point on your life becomes victorious because the kingdom excelling in the kingdom is predicated on your access to light write the word light down please i'm sure that you've heard and learned a lot through this conference about light but let's review a few things about light hallelujah the word light from a scriptural standpoint means many things number one light means revelation or illumination light means revelation or illumination number two light means the capacity to make that which is hidden manifest light means revelation it means illumination light also means the capacity to make that which were was hidden to be made manifest hallelujah so we're working with these two definitions now so that every time you hear light it means number one revelation or illumination are we together now in this kingdom the bible without hiding lets us know that an encounter with jesus christ is profitable but it's not the only requirement for an excelling and a victorious christian life so it is possible to have so many believers who have had a genuine encounter with jesus but the possibility is that their lives command differ not because another eternal life was in one person or the other but because they have not been able to access light your personal victory in this kingdom is released at the instance of your access to light notice your personal victory converting the realities that have been finished in christ to become your experience here and now is predicated on your pursuit and your access to light ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 please give it to us 4 18 ephesians are we learning tonight let's read together it's projected one to read having the understanding darkened please stop there let's read it one more time first four words having the understanding so he's diagnosing a problem here as to why a believer even though in christ cannot step into the full potential of what jesus died for and in the diagnosis noting not notice here that satan is not even mentioned the bible says the problem is that his understanding is darkened darkened means there is absence of light it says being alienated consequently from the life of god that means potentially you receive that life in christ but in experience we do not see you working functionally and the bible says every time your confession or what the bible says should happen to you is different from your experience he's saying go to this scripture to find out what is wrong it is that your understanding is darkened and that every time the understanding of a believer is darkened the result is that he will be alienated from the potential of the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts So on one hand, I study my Bible and I see that the victorious life is the believer's destiny in Christ. I study my Bible and I find out that we have been raised with Christ for instance. Is that true? The Bible lets us know that we are far above 
principalities, powers, thrones. But you see, that can remain an empty confession with no corresponding reality in your life. Sadly, this has become the experience of many believers. We are not in ignorance as to what the word of God says should be our experience. But to be able to step into the reality of it. This is why God has put this conference. Because you see, the side effect of seeing things in the Bible that never finds expression in your life is that you will eventually be frustrated. So you find believers after 10, 20 years of being in church will wave church goodbye and say, look, I'm tired of pretending. I'm tired of acting as if this thing is working. There is nothing to fake about the faith life. Everything is a reality that with light and understanding, your life becomes a demonstration. And you know, when your life becomes a demonstration of the truth of scripture with time, it becomes a message to others about the potency of what is written. It is at that point the Bible calls you a living epistle. Hallelujah. Are we learning? So he says, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. Remember our definition of light that we said light in scripture talks of revelation and illumination. Light also talks about the capacity to make what was hidden to be made manifest. Because the Bible says anything that can make manifest is light. It means the assignment of darkness is to cover potentials. The assignment of darkness is to stop you from stepping into the experience of spiritual realities. Someone in the name of Jesus, you are waving darkness goodbye this night. Darkness that kept your loved ones. Darkness that has buried your destiny. Are we together? Let me show you something that the Bible has to say about light. Please give us Luke 15, I believe. Luke 15, 8 and 10. 8 to 10. This is the parable of the lost coin. The Bible says, Either what woman, having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, what is the first thing she does? She lights a candle. Because the assignment of darkness is to close what is there and to stop you from experiencing the blessing that comes with it. Anointed to be a king, but hiding somewhere like David, like Gideon. That is the assignment of darkness. Listen, if the lights in this auditorium went off suddenly, we will not know who is who. The person you are looking for may be seated close to you, but because you are in darkness, you can sit for hours and yet the person you are looking for is right there. Your phone may fall down and you need it to pick a call and you may not be able to see it. The assignment of darkness is to hide potentials. The assignment of darkness is to make easy things look difficult. The assignment of darkness is to elongate pain. What woman? Notice a brilliant woman here. She had 10 pieces of silver and then by whatever reason one got missing and the woman said i will not leave that one my joy will not be complete you would think because she had nine she should leave the one maybe god is speaking to someone thank god for the areas where you have experienced victory but in this conference insist that whatever is left by the light of god's word like this woman i will begin the bible says the first thing she did was not to carry a candle but to light a candle carrying a candle without light is a waste of time she knew that it was somewhere in the room but i can't find where it is the same way your job is somewhere in the world somewhere in nigeria your helper is somewhere in lagos the favor you are looking for is is around your vicinity but the assignment of light is to lead you with exactitude to the place where it lies the bible says she lit a candle and started sweeping the house and she sought diligently till she found it verse 9 he says when she finally found it because if you use light you must find it with light there will always be a finding it may take time but you will find it that she called her friends and her neighbors to rejoice with her 
for I have found the peace that I was lost. Hallelujah. Dominion in any area of your life and in this kingdom is based on high level spiritual illumination. Dominion, walking in the experience of dominion in this kingdom. Please listen very carefully. Whether it is manifesting the anointing of the Holy Spirit, whether it is leadership, whether it's commanding extraordinary results, every dimension of dominion in this kingdom is governed by light. The brighter your light, the higher your level of insight and illumination, that is the degree to which the glory of God radiates in and through your life. The Bible says he made many lights, but he made two great lights. One to rule the day and then the other to rule in the night. If your life is in the category of the many lights, you won't experience total defeat, but you also not experience total victory. But it says there were others that were great lights. Are we together? We need enough knowledge and high level spiritual illumination. There are many of you here. There are things that if you knew and you know, the level of anointing that you're functioning will change immediately. It is not luck. There are things if you do not know. The sick cannot be healed through your hands. There are things if you do not know. Lives cannot be blessed through your hands. Trying in ignorance is a recipe for frustration. This woman would have gone around the room. That's what many of us are doing. That every time your life does not capture certain results, don't start hunting for answers yet. Go for light. Not the coin. Forget about the coin and look for a candle. Forget about the job and look for light. Forget about the causes. Look for light. Every time your life is not answering, what you need is access to light. It will never tire me to share with you my vision. I'm sure you've heard it again and again. Many years ago, I had a vision that would change my life forever. I saw a giant door that was made up of smaller doors. And they were opening and closing, opening and closing. And upon every small door, there were scriptures that were written. And when they open light will shoot out of them and the Holy Ghost began to speak to me that every one of those doors represent dimensions in the spirit with a scripture connected to them that when you truly catch the light that dimension the engracing to defend that revelation is released upon you so that you will no longer just be saying things that you cannot defend with your life hallelujah high level spiritual illumination now there is a difference between light and information you have to get that light i told you is revelation and high level spiritual illumination because you see in our world especially today's world um there is no problem with information there are all kinds of information even spiritual information but i submit to you by the authority of god's word that many of the information we have around do not carry any spiritual value as far as the revelation of christ is concerned and the excelling of the believer he says that was the true light that lighted every man that means there are false lights they carry a semblance of liberty but when you gauge them against these two definitions of light remember it does not give you revelation number two it does not make that which is hidden manifest he said that was the true light that lighted every man that means there are false lights information that carry a semblance of spirituality yet in the presence of principalities and powers in the presence of real life situations it does not carry the potency to liberate some of those supposed lights 
have come to us as cultural wise sayings wise sayings we grew up hearing people say and we repeat it with so much conviction but in the face of real life situation an example of such is one day go better you see very very innocent statement but barring of any power whatsoever in the realm of the spirit because according to scripture nothing happens on its own realities are engaged for everyone that asketh matthew 7 7 and 8 everyone that asketh receive it not everyone that wants everyone that seeketh finds and to him that knocks the door shall be open not for everyone but to him that knocks Are we together it is important to have sufficient knowledge that helps us to command and establish dominion I would always make reference to 1st Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 a scripture that has helped me and provided sponsored consistent hunger for deeper levels in the spirit let's read it together probably this is a word for someone tonight as loud as you can want to read if any man think that he knoweth anything uh-huh he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know very powerful scripture very powerful scripture when you read acts chapter 18 from verse 24 the bible talks about a very great man very interesting rendition there it says and a certain Jew named Apollos born at Alexandria the Bible called him an eloquent man he called him mighty in scripture the Bible says he came to Ephesus next verse the Bible says the man was instructed in the way of the Lord he was fervent in spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of God read the last line please knowing only the baptism of john what a tragic way to end such credentials with all of his zeal and power and passion fervent in spirit the bible says knowing only the baptism of john it is dangerous to know only there may be many dimensions that are required to be captured in your christian experience for your holistic excellence the question is not what you already know now what else do you need to know for that ministry to rise what else do you need to know to operate at a higher level of the anointing praying for hundred sick people and celebrating only two people who are healed thank god for it but you can't remain at that level you don't flog a child for limping and or starting to walk and falling but when that child is 10 20 years old and is still trying to that is a medical condition now you see there are most of us let me tell you the time and the opportunity God has given you there are certain dimensions you should be operating in right now and it is important to stop comparing yourself with people who are not serious with God and finding consolation that at least I am better than them there are realms of prayer, realms of spiritual intelligence, realms of results that your life should begin to command by now. And in the name of Jesus, let me speak over someone that every hindrance that is stopping your spiritual potential and not allowing you to reveal the glory of God in this conference, it drops from your life right now. Please be seated. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. The Bible says, and Jesus increased. We are never supposed to remain at the same level. Jesus, who is our pattern man, increased. Jesus increased. Pastor, you must increase. Businessman, you must increase. And notice the dimensions of the increase. In wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man anything that remains at the same level is not experiencing growth and increase it ought not to be so for the path of the just the bible says is as a shining light and if true that is as a shining light then it shines more and more the bible says even unto the perfect day hallelujah 
so we need high level spiritual understanding in galatians chapter 2 and verse 2 paul was speaking and he said i went up by revelation i went up we don't go up by desire desire is important but it's not enough to take you up we go up by revelation i went up in business by revelation i went up in ministry by revelation i went up in influence by revelation i gained greater capacity in the spirit by revelation someone shout light let the devil hear you say light we go up by revelation we go up by revelation that means the assignment of darkness is to keep you down so that you never rise and remember the only way Jesus is revealed is when he's lifted up and for you to lift him up you must go up yourself you can't lift Jesus up remaining down no for someone God is really speaking to you tonight enough is enough you have stagnated at that level spiritually you have stagnated at that level hoping superstitiously that one day you will rise is irresponsibility as a christian you must take responsibility tonight and engage take responsibility for why your prayer life is still where it is take responsibility for why you don't seem to be able to command dominion over principalities and powers excuses are they are the, the, the is, is, is a system of insurance of mediocres you must kill it away and make up your mind that I'm ready to take responsibility are we together very quickly there are five areas or five dimensions of light that every believer must access to rise since the bible says you arise and shine only when your light is come there are five dimensions of light very quickly i want to introduce tonight and then we'll pray please pray in the spirit in one minute five dimensions of revelation five dimensions of light that you must access as a necessary condition for your rising and your excelling hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the lord who is christopher I just heard the name Christova. Is there someone with that name Christova? We're going to pray, but I want you to be sensitive. I really sense in my spirit that many of you have come here with tremendous levels of hunger. And there are some of you, there is a gap that has been provided because of lack of your spiritual growth. There are some distances in the spirit over the destinies of others that were mandated that it is your anointing that will help meet. But because you have not stretched to grow, there are people who are still being victimized and that space is caused by the lack in your capacity in the spirit. You have come to this conference tonight because there has to be an unction from heaven that will rest upon you. You cannot, maybe your family members, maybe other people, every time they pray for as long as Moses did not rise, Israel kept suffering in Egypt for as long as he remained there. And so there are many of you who have come here tonight, listen very carefully, that there are destinies that have been tied you are seeing it again in your dreams you are seeing god revealed to you don't allow more people die don't allow more people backslide the healing of someone was connected to your anointing the direction in his life was connected to your prophetic gift but because it is still at the level of infancy god cannot introduce you to the destiny that it is connected i don't know who i'm speaking to but in the name of jesus christ anyone here whose fire has gone down I stretch my hands may fire from heaven rest upon you now rest upon you now 
Rapakatos Katebata, rest upon you now in the name of Jesus from heaven let that fire consume every laxity in the spirit listen up Ezekiel 22 and verse 30 and I sought for a man I sought for a man among them not every man I sought for a man among them that he should make up the hedge I sought for a man in that family that for 100 years nobody has risen God is saying among the family members is there no one who will donate himself to me by light to say to end this yoke of darkness and this oppression I sought for a man who will make up the hedge and to stand but you see you don't stand until you have done all to stand it says haven't done all to stand stand if you have not done all to stand you cannot stand there are things to do to stand it takes more than a wish to stand haven't done all to stand stand Hallelujah. Please bring the following people out for me now. I'm going to pray. I just saw like it was in Acts chapter 2. I saw like cloven tongues of fire. This is a mighty fire of revival. Please begin to bring them out for me now. I stretch my hands. Even as I prayed earlier on, we're still teaching. But I need to release this grace. When this fire comes upon you, it means there is a mantle crying out from your spirit. Maybe that of a revivalist. Maybe that of a prophet. Men and women, male and female. Please bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Everyone here that has prophecy knocking at the gate of your destiny, but it looks like it's not been opened. Barakatos Kedia. Please help the ushers to bring them out receive that fire right now receive that fire right now i ignite you in the name of jesus 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 neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel for as long as the lamp is not lit you can leave it where it is but when light comes upon that lamp, it cannot remain under. It must be put above at the lampstand. Bring them out. A new dimension. A new dimension. The Spirit of God is resting upon your spirit. Hear me, young lady. That grace of a woman of God that grace of a prophetess that is crying from within you I quicken it right now by the Spirit I quicken it right now by the Spirit I quicken it right now by the Spirit that was the true light that lighted every man that was the true light help them please that was the true light that lighted every man that was the true light that lighted every man that there be genuine results to your Christian experience genuine results to your Christian experience genuine results in ministry genuine results in business please lift your voice and begin to pray in one minute light I cry for light tired of this level at this realm in prayer in fasting in the spirit I contend for higher altitudes in the spirit yeah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we sit down, let me pray. Listen, one of the mantles God is restoring to the body before Jesus returns is the genuine ministry of signs and wonders. Genuine ministry of signs and wonders. Many people have not really experienced signs and wonders is beyond falling down and rolling. We are talking of revealing Christ at a dimension in a way that will keep nations still. I don't know this gentleman, this one wearing blue. Take that grace now in the name of Jesus. Bring him out. I don't know who this gentleman is. In the name of Jesus, let it be a new season for you. I want to release that grace. The grace for signs and wonders. You are a man of God here. It's time to stop doing ministry that makes it look like you collected power from the devil ministry that brings shame and reproach to the name of the lord it says when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but with the demonstration of power that your faith will not rest upon sophia the wisdom of men but upon the power of god i stretch my hands right now may that grace i don't know where you are in this congregation but i want you to bring them out please in the name of jesus let it fall like the dew of Hammon. At the count of three one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now i set you on fire like the foxes of samson in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah please don't be distracted pay attention to what the spirit of god is doing i'm seeing like a violin in the spirit this is what i'm seeing and the lord is saying that there is a level of grace he is calling some prophetic worshipers there are people who are into the ministry of prophetic psalmistry right now i want to release that mantle i'm seeing a violin in the spirit i don't know where you are but there are songs you will start singing that you did not write songs that will come from the spirit as ladders that usher men into dimensions of revival i stretch my hands by the rod of a higher priesthood may that grace upon every prophetic psalmist receive that grace right now i quicken your spirit hear the sounds of the spirit i quicken your spirit hear the sounds of the spirit hear me miriam in the bible was not a musician but even as a prophetess when this grace came upon her it was miriam that wrote the song he said i will sing unto the lord for he had triumphed gloriously it's called the songs of miriam that even in heaven we are going to sing those songs prophetic worshipers by the spirit many of you will write the songs that will lead the body of christ to the next level of revival you will receive them like ladders in the spirit you will not only sing the ones that have been received i stretch my hands once again may it come to you in the night while you sleep may it come to you in the place of prayer help the worshipers please house of the household of david even for the worship team may it come upon you songs in the spirit in the name of jesus christ man putting your hand on your head come what do you do 
contract signed in, in the bank. I'm into ministry. Are you in the bank? Yes. What do you have to do with the bank? Contract staff is in the bank. Bank secretary. Huh? I'm a bank secretary. You work in the bank. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. You are not going to be there for a very long time. But the call of God is upon you. This what I'm telling you, God has revealed to you already. I have a ministry. Huh? I have a, a ministry. church. Yeah, pastor, I have a ministry. Mm. Part time one. That's what I'm saying. I want to pray for you. You believe in the power of God? Yes, sir. My friend, your heart is sincere. But you cannot do ministry without the potent power of the spirit. It will only frustrate you. Believe me when I tell you this. Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus, here in this conference, I stretch my hands upon you. Let the engracing of the spirit rest upon you. That you will do ministry with results. I release that grace right now upon you in the name of Jesus. I'm stretching my hands towards him. But the person who is shouting is different, is in this role. Bring the person for me now. A loud shout right now by the Spirit. I, I just saw the hand of God right from this man resting upon someone. Please, when that happens, a loud shout. Bring that person out. Because the hand of God is upon that person. God is doing very serious impartations. And he's lifting men to seasons of grace and seasons of power. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. And I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. He who was and is and is to come, I will see before you strong forever. All the angels sing and they bow down and they cry holy. Yes, we cry holy. We are sons and daughters, we praise you now and we cry holy. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give a praise to Him alone. Shala barato sabras kabele kosiata. Listen to me. We only arise in this kingdom and we shine to the degree to which our lights come. Not the degree to which your light is available. There is a light component to every dimension in the spirit. In John chapter 16 beginning from verse 12. Here's what Jesus said. I have many things to tell you now, he said, but ye cannot bear them. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he says he shall guide you into all truth. Sanctify them by thy truth. He says, thy word is truth. One thing you cannot deny is the potent presence of light. I told you the assignment of light is to make manifest is from the word doxazo the flaunting the unveiling of the glory of the king the bible says in first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 it says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood he says and holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into light if it is true that you have translated from the realm of darkness to light there is an expectation from heaven over your life 
there is a song that must be sung on account of your life there is a message that must emanate because of the excellency of the workings of the spirit in your life do not rob a generation from singing a song that brings glory to the name of the lord because of your refusal to rise there are many of us the message for you tonight is come up here you are clapping for yourself too early and for nothing there are higher realms virgin dimensions in the spirit Paul said Job was speaking and said there is a place where the eyes of the vulture has not seen that the whelps of the lion has not even gotten there hear me ladies and gentlemen no matter what you have seen in the spirit there are still virgin dimensions of power and grace we must press with humility and hunger as though we had not even started Paul said this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind he says I press I press that is the attitude of men who want to host God to a superior dimension I count myself he says to not have apprehended that is the character of men who know the moment you find pride at the corridors of your spiritual walk know that you are about to peg yourself at a dimension thank God for all you may have seen in your life but for as long as there is one sick person who passes you and you cannot do anything about it know that there are still realms and dimensions mm. I'm speaking to a generation thank God for grace we should not be discouraged but let's be careful we are clapping for ourselves too early there are higher dimensions in the spirit we pride over little 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 things no the expectation of the king over our lives is very high the bar the standard that has been put for a generation is very high the days of the general some of us would not even be in the ministerial position the position we have now that we call ourselves apostles in the days of the generals will probably be ushers or people walking somewhere it was look at the standard it took to walk in the welfare department of the early church that for us is the requirement today for a crusade yet that was a requirement to serve food you needed to be full of the holy ghost to serve food what is it about serving food it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you hallelujah hallelujah i'm seeing hepatitis b God is healing someone right now of hepatitis B. Hepatitis B. In the name of Jesus, we declare the healing power of Jesus upon your body to crush the works of darkness. Can we use 10 minutes so I just introduce what I wanted to share? Please sit down. Let's get back to what we're doing. So I said there are five levels of light that the believer must encounter. Five levels of light. Light representing knowledge and spiritual illumination. Light representing that which makes manifest. For the Bible says that which makes manifest is light. Please, I want you to pay attention to these five dimensions of light these should represent a guide and a compass to your exploring spiritual things that means in your seeking to access light you can narrow your pursuit to these five areas and you will not be wrong a random search for anything spiritual in an attempt to become a person of stature will lead you to all shades of superstition, divination, and a mix of spiritual things 
as we have now. So there is a random search for anything spiritual. Just because it is spiritual does not mean it is godly. Hallelujah. I hope you know that even Satan came from God. Not as Satan, but he still came from God. So when you say all who were created by God stand up, Satan will also stand up. But it does not make him a blessing. Listen carefully. Don't say all knowledge came from God. So you learn everything. Even Satan came from God. Not as Satan, as Lucifer. Just because God created it does not mean it is blessing you now. Satan, the arch enemy of God's program, was and still remains God's creation. There is a random search for revelation that is not profitable as far as the spiritual experience of the believer is concerned. And this is the missing link between us and the fathers and those who have gone ahead of us. Their pursuit, as they navigated the path of the spirit, they were looking for specific things, not everything. Our spiritual experiences open us up to the realm of the spirit and we stand a risk to fall into deception and derision if we do not know and have an idea of the things that we are seeking. The Bible says when you start encountering lights, be careful because there are false lights. He says, but that was the true light that lighted every man. Number one. The first dimension of light that every believer must pursue and seek to have very richly if you want to rise and to excel is the knowledge of God and of Jesus his begotten son. Write it down please. The first dimension of light that every believer must pursue. If you want to rise and excel to be a person of stature and to serve the purposes of the kingdom in a great measure, you must pursue this dimension of light. The knowledge of God the Father and of Jesus, his begotten son. In Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32, the B part, the Bible says, but the people that do know their God, it says they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Not the people who desire greatness. The exploits of the believer in this kingdom is connected to his knowing God. The word knowing there does not just mean awareness of his existence. It's a deeper level of relationship. You see, when you go to a herbalist, you don't need a relationship. You don't need to ask him his name. You don't need to say, who are you? Can I know you? Can I? Do you have a wife and children? No. All you need is to tell him what problem you have. I'm looking for a political position. And he will calculate from the spirit all you need to bring. One goat, one cow, maybe one human being, something else, and add some money. Now, <laughs> these guys ask for money now. And money does not go into the realm of the spirit. Money doesn't have blood. But they still ask for it. As honorarium, I'm sure. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we together? So they give you, you provide the requirement and leave. You don't even need to know his name. But you see, when you come to God, stretching your hand, he will shift your hand and come to your heart. He wants a relationship first before the issue of gifts come. You're excelling in this kingdom. Even your conviction is predicated upon the depth of your knowledge of God. John chapter 17 and verse 3, Jesus was praying and he said, this is eternal life that they may know thee, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life. Not just confessing in front of an altar that the administration of eternal life the manifestation of the potential of eternal life is at the instance of knowing the true God and Jesus whom he had sent. There are many people who have not paid the price and are not interested in paying the price to know God. Let me submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, it truly takes time to know God. It takes time to know God. 
In fact, it takes forever to know God. Is someone learning? Very, very important. The first dimension of light you must seek as you desire to be relevant in God's program is the knowledge of God. Can I tell you, if you reduce most of the things you are pursuing to know and you focus on knowing God, there are many, many things you would not have to look for again. In the knowledge of God is many advantages put together. I can tell you, man of God, rather than looking for a venue, settle down to know God first. It is powerful when men know God. Moses, do not stand before Pharaoh if you don't know the one who sent you. It is not English that will make Pharaoh to let God's people go. It is an encounter with the God of the Bible. And Moses was not even afraid. He said, God, I'm not ready to embarrass myself and mark my destiny down. Who should I go and tell Pharaoh has sent me? And he said, I am that I am. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you. Listen. Many people who are being mightily used by God across the globe today, some of those people did not start with the ambition of fame. It was a blind pursuit to know him. At the zenith of Paul's ministry, here was what he said as his pursuit, that I may know you. Not minding the fact that I have potential to write two-thirds of the New Testament, that I may know him. 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 Sinach got it right. That the more I know you. The more I want to know you. Jesus. More of you. The more I know you. The more I want to know you. Jesus. More of you. It seems to me like in this generation, our quest for fame has overtaken our love and passion for God. We do not desire to know him as much as we want to be known. We do not desire to know him. We desire to be known. We desire to be called names. Nothing wrong with those things. But let me tell you, if anything overtakes your pursuit to know God, you are already at the corridors of compromise. Jesus, more of you. More than knowing sermons, more than knowing the names of men of God and their titles and their credentials, more than knowing the address to a church, no, that I may know you. Do you know what it means to know a man? Ask those who know the president. Ask those who know the NMPC boss. Who told you there is no advantage in knowing a man? Most of us right now are limited because we do not have access. Show me a man who has access to the heart of a man. And I show you a man who can get things at the instance of their desire. Eyes have not seen nor ear heard neither has it come into the heart of any man the things that god has in store not just for christians but for them that love him there is no genuine love without seeking you are my strength when i am weak you are the treasures that i seek you are my only remember you used to sing this song those days I'm seeking you as a precious joy, not to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my only Maybe we should add this one too. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. Sing, Lord, I will bow. 
I will bow Gone are the days where people love themselves for three days and their prayer is, Lord, I just want to know you. This time around is, Lord, I'm tired of shame. I'm tired of shame. And that is sincere. But do you not know that it is in the knowledge of him that certain things go? There are many people who did not have to pray certain prayers when they found him. Ah, when you find him like a treasure that has been missing, you find yourself too, which is the second thing the second level of light write it down please you will find yourself when you start looking for yourself without finding him you will find a wrong you because there are many versions of you some of them are not needed there is a version of you that reflects Christ that is the one you should be looking for Paul said there are two realities that function within my members he says the things that I desire to do, I do not find myself doing them. And that the things I do not desire, I find myself doing them. Two dimensions existing in one man. You need to find God first before you start looking for you. When you find him, you will know which you you are looking for. Otherwise, you will find many versions that are, need, are not needed. He said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? The second dimension of light you must access is that you must know yourself. You must know who you are in light of who Christ is. Please do not trivialize this. The challenges in life will not ask you where you are coming from. Uh -uh. They will ask you whose son are you. That was the question that Saul asked David. When David dared to fight Goliath, he said, whose son are you? Where are you coming from? From whence did you muzzle this courage to stand before this beast that has even threatened the warriors of Israel? You must know who you are. Most people you see will tell you that they know who they are. It is not men who will ask you who you are. It's situations and circumstances that will ask you. They are the ones who are looking for that answer. The Bible says, a man of honor. Please just spare me a few minutes and we're done. Wherever we stop, we'll continue tomorrow. Psalm 49 and verse 20. It says, man that is with honor and knoweth not is like a beast that perisheth. A man who has been exalted with the potential of honor and grace but because he does not understand it he will die like a beast in the field for instance the prodigal son the prodigal son was born into royalty under the watch of his father he would never know lack but now this young man had reduced himself to a point where he was feeding with swine it was a prophetic adumbration of the believers tragedy born in royalty born from royalty but that your current state can be depletion to a point that you are feeding with the swine and the prodigal son said to himself how many hired servants has my father and then i am here feeding with the swine even in his depraved position he still recognized the glory of his father he said i will arise and i will go back to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven that i am not worthy to be called your son but that you take me as one of your servants and he got up and did that which he said he would do and as soon as the father saw him royalty was restored in that instant and a celebration began immediately a man that is in honor and does not know will die like a beast in the field please hear me the reason why many of you keep fighting on necessary battles is because you have listened to what everybody has said you are but you have not found out what god has said you are 
they've told you people who come from your place look like this can anything good come out of nazareth nathaniel did not lie except that jesus was the son of god and he that cometh from above is above all you need to know who you are this is not a pentecostal lecture this is a light requirement for an excelling destiny when you know who you are then you know what must be under your feet hallelujah praise the name of the Lord there are stubborn children of rich men in this country and across Africa and even though they are stubborn and disobedient they are wise enough to know that their parents are wealthy and even in the midst of their stubbornness you will just manage them there are things you cannot avoid these are stubborn children of kings not to talk of children of the king of kings there are listen let me tell you the truth the knowledge of who you are in Christ does not produce pride but it produces confidence I'm walking in power walking in miracles I live a life of favor I know who I am I'm walking in power I walk in miracles I live a life of favor. I, know who I, am. I wish that transits from being a song to a revelation. That when you walk upon the earth, you walk with dignity and honor. Not because some person looked at you and said you will never amount to nothing. Because you did not take the time to know God, you don't even know what you look like. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we are now called the sons of God. It says, Now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Just because I am evolving experientially. Listen, when you watch a little chick becoming the mother hen, at that point, she does not have all the qualities yet, but they are there watch the process of metamorphosis of an insect from the egg the lava the pupa when you look at it and look at the insect it does not look like it but there is a transformation happening most of you are looking like many people today that are not god you are looking like social media you are looking like some some ignorant person who does not respect the program of god You must realize that the price for who you are is the blood of Jesus if that sounds cheap to you then allow anybody look down on you listen believers hear me it took Jesus dying dying to shed his blood that was the price that purchased you so any other thing that downplays you you can shrug it away out of a standpoint of revelation that you know who you are are we together yeah. this is a second dimension of light that you must find my time is up but let me tie this you must know who you are in Ephesians chapter 2 when you read from verse 1 Ephesians chapter 2 please let's hurry up so we pray the Bible says and you have he quickened Paul the apostle was mentoring the church in Ephesus and he was opening them up to the reality of who the, they were and are in Christ you have he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sins wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience verse 3 it says among whom ye had our conversation stop there i can talk a lot about that your conversation your speaking is a very potent revelation of where or where I think that should be what scripture is this just keep your hands there and let's look at them um, help me Holy Spirit give us Isaiah 8 20 Isaiah 8 20 I pray that is it beautiful read it with me please everybody one to read 
to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them that means there is a way those who carry light speak that if, if you hear certain people speak you don't need to feel bad they are only revealing the bankruptcy of light if they do not speak according to this word it is because there is no light in them it may not be that because they are bad there are things you should not waste your time on there is no light before you get into any spiritual discussion verify that the person you are speaking to has light within him otherwise you'll be speaking from two different dimensions so when an uncle looks at you and says you are a failure don't feel bad and say god punish you no verify if that guy is speaking because there is no light in him you will love him from afar with compassion and just pray that the mercy of god speaks for him but as far as your confidence is concerned surround it with the word of god like chariots behind the king surround the bible says to cast not away your confidence for it has a great recompense of reward man of god who has lied to you that you cannot rise and excel in ministry who has told you that you scrounge around in a defeated way no the difference between you and everybody you admire is light and access to the help of the spirit if you can submit yourself to light there is no height you cannot attain i tell you this excelling is not an exclusive preserve for a few the same lord is rich unto all No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. Listen, I want you to go back and take the time, immerse yourself in the revelation of who you are in Christ. Don't study it like a Pentecostal. You will not get what you should get. Respectfully speaking, you understand what I mean. Don't carry religiosity and say, no, 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 no. Settle down like a child of God. What has the word of God says, I am in Christ. And do not think that revelation is basic. It is why many proud people still remain weak. They act bold, but the, the result that follow boldness is not there. If I look at um, Pete Daniels and I call you a woman, will you cry? Will you pray? Not for that. Why? Because there, there, there are too many, you've been a man all your life. There are too many revelations that have concretized that. You see that? When Nathaniel looked at Jesus and said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? If he was somebody like Elijah, he would turn Nathaniel to a rod first. And then, or an animal like it happened to the king, then return him back and say, what did you say again? And demand apology, but not Jesus. Secured enough to understand the limitation of the man speaking. Listen, there are too many of you fighting unnecessary battles. Those battles are a report card that there are many holes that have been punctured in yourself your sense of self-confidence i'm not talking about pride going around looking for trouble and harassing people emotionally i'm talking about a settled sense of confidence if god wants to bless 10 people you've heard me say i will start praying for the remaining nine because one slot is taken already What do you believe about yourself? You are trying to use a new car to show you are successful. A new house, a new shoe. Those burdens are unnecessary. Every time the yoke is killing you, it is not God's own. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Social media can give you a yoke God did not give you. Oh, ladies, this is how they behave. This is how this one behaves. And you put yourself in trouble, yoking yourself with unnecessary things. When God is already calling you a champion, the status quo, the mindset of mediocre people speak 
speaking based on the darkness that is within them. Now, it's not for you to fight people and say, no, 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 no. I'm not teaching you to harass people, but I'm giving you confidence to be able to sleep sound, even if it is one room. Because your position of honor, there is no physical house that can host that glory. If Christ came to live in you, it is not just by translocating from one place to the other. Thank God for the physical expressions. If you must watch a designer watch, you must wear a designer watch to feel good about yourself. Then go and read the Bible. Something is wrong with your orientation. Thank God for increase. But these are only additions. Hear me? Even when a crown of thorn was put on his head, Jesus did not refuse the fact that he was king. He didn't need a golden crown to accept he was a king. Some of you need to walk out of here with confidence. I may trek to my house, but while I am going, I'm speaking with honor and dignity that in the name of Jesus there are generations connected to me and with honor I will walk through the law of time and process no living a fake life no snapping near someone's car putting it online no telling lies with, with, with security man of God do not be ashamed to celebrate the five members that you have don't go around telling lies and say I have the three thousand no 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 Every one of those five people is worth the blood of Jesus. Mentor them with your all. Let God see you pray for them. Shout and teach them like you would teach in a crusade ground. And the God who increases men, when he comes to mark your script and to measure a thousand cubits for you. Listen, insecurity is largely a spiritual problem first before a psychological problem. And it is wounded people who wound others. When you are secured in yourself, you're not going to, when you are wounded and you do not allow the word of God to heal you, you will only find joy when others are frowning too. Because for as long as they are laughing, it affects your state. It reminds you and tries to concretize the fact that you are a failure. Secured people always long for the joy of everybody around them. Are you listening now? Pastor, my apologies. I'm so sorry. Can I give you the third one? And then we'll pray. There are five. So, in pursuance of light, light that is the true light that excels, the first and the highest dimension of light you must seek is to know him. There is no end to this pursuit, not even your arrival in heaven. Because even in heaven, we will still come up hither. Learning God and seeking him will not come to an end. Number two, the knowledge of yourself in light of who Christ is, who you are in Christ, that you are the beloved, you are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Very simple statements. Fathers like Papa Hagen, T.L. Osborne, R.W. Shambach. These men understood this thing with a depth of revelation. It was this kind of revelation that sponsored the audacity of men like John G. Lake that would hold viruses in their hands that were killing people because they knew by revelation that he that cometh from above is above all. For us, we just confess it without staying to receive it as a revelation. Number three. What is the third dimension of light you must pursue if you desire to rise structurally and to represent the purposes of God? You must know your place in God's program. You must know your place in God's divine program. You must find your destiny in God's program. You must find the role that you have to play as far as God's global apostolic and prophetic program is concerned. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, people of God, that there is a role and a place for everyone. There are many people today doing assignments they did not start with because those who were supposed to occupy that space were lazy. God had to transfer their bishopric and add it to others so that there will be no slack. 
man's bishopric can be given to others the bible shows us that you must find your place please hear me your relevance and your value even your reward is connected to your ability to find your place in luke chapter 4 when you read from verse 16 and 17 the bible puts it beautifully there speaking about jesus that he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was the bible says he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up for to read let's read 17 together and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet isaiah now i like this and when he opened the book he found the place it was written there is a place where it is written concerning you it takes the spirit to journey with you to find it but when you find it you have found the basis for your relevance you have found the reason why you should not die young you have found the reason he found it the secret is to open the book you will never find where it is written till you have the stamina to open the book when he opened the book he found other versions will say he found where it was written concerning him and then he began to quote it the spirit of the lord is upon me when he finished he said this scripture is today fulfilled in your ears hallelujah you must find your place in God's program. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. It says, Lo, I come. 10, 7 Hebrews. Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it says, It is written of me. Someone shout, It is written of me. Let the devil hear you. Say, It is written of me. Can I tell you the truth? It is going to be difficult for you to believe what I'm going to tell you now. But every one of you, there is a place where the prophecy of your destiny is written in this book. You will stumble across it and you will know it was you God was speaking to. There was no, no other person claimed what was written about Jesus. No other person came and said it's written about me and him. Well, we can claim it now because we are in him. But I mean, nobody came as a fulfillment of it. No. You can find where it was written concerning you. For instance, you can study your scripture and find where it was written. Cry yet saying, thus said the Lord, that my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion. And God will speak to you and say, that, re that is a capture of your mandate. That you are supposed to provide the financial resources that will fund the end time revival. Your diligence over money now does not come from a carnal man's standpoint. Just acquiring for mundane things. That is the testimony of the rich fool. But now you know that you are, you, are, you are pursuing resources like this to be able to fund God's program. Because you have found out where it was written concerning you. You have read many books. Please open the book. Every other person who wrote every other book did not have any accreditation from God. This has been tried seven times. Open it and you will find therein where it was written concerning you if you are jeremiah you will find it in chapter 1 from verse 5 down to 7 that whilst you were still in your mother's womb that he called you and ordained you to be a prophet to the nations and jeremiah the young boy said no for i am a child he said i am little and god rebuked him and said say not that i am a child but that wherever i send you to thou shalt go and whatsoever i tell you to speak that you shall speak and then he told him what seest thou and he said i see the rod of an almond tree and he said you have seen correctly for i will hasten my word he says to perform it you must find out we are gathered today celebrating what god is doing in the lives of people with many connecting across the world because a man found where it was written can i tell you do not play with the light you find. When he sends a word to you, dear Jacob, Israel is at the mercy of that light. He sent a word to Jacob, but the impact of that word lightened upon Israel. He sent a word to his servant, now with his dear wife, and now everyone who has come here is a beneficiary and a partaker. Only God knows what you are robbing us by not finding your place. Maybe something you have discovered would have made our ministry efficient. 
imagine I, as simple as do you know how many souls have been won through the correct management of social media platforms do you know how many people imagine that the person who discovered a printing machine he did not know what he was discovering for us access to the word of god is when we get to heaven the crowns of so many people will surprise us because they utilize what god gave them provided it contributed to the revelation of jesus there must be a reward are we together now let's stop here so that we'll give the remaining two tomorrow let me encourage you i don't know what sacrifice you are going to make but one of the things i hope that we'll do tomorrow is we'll have some time to pray and to impart upon you the grace that will cause your eyes to see you'll find that in ephesians chapter 3 from verse 9 paul was praying having said from verse 3 when you read ephesians 3 and verse 3 let's read verse 3 how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery how that by light he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote a fourth time in fact let's go down to verse 5 verse 4 he says that when ye read verse 4 now ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ which in time past other ages was not known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit why was it revealed go to verse 9 he says that this grace when you read verse 8 that he who was the least of all the apostles was this grace given to him to understand and to preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ then verse 9 he says to make all men see how many men can see all men it depends on the grace that comes on them all men see all men see all men see when those men see then we go to verse 10 give us verse 10 please it says to the intent this is why God wants all men to see to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the ecclesia, the multifaceted, the manifold wisdom of God. For you to, to reveal the manifold wisdom of God, you must see. And for you to see, you must obtain the grace that makes all men see. I hope you know that sight is a product of vision and light not vision alone your eyes can be walking but if there is no light you will not see in the night in pitch darkness the one who has eyes and the one who is blind will have the same experience it takes the union of light and sight or vision for it to be said that you have seen most of us have eyes but the light component has not come this is why this conference has been designed can we stop here for tonight and pray? Let's rise up on our feet. Please hold hands with someone by your left and right. Let's just dedicate a minute or two and pray in the spirit as a family of faith. Hold hands with someone who are crying that God will show us higher, greater, deeper things in the spirit lift your voice and pray we are praying as a family of faith pray in the spirit lord we contend for greater dimensions of light they that sat in darkness have seen a great light those who were by the valley of the shadow of death light has dawned on them someone pray that we are ready to arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept us we are ready to rise to a new light the bible says that life was the light of men john 1 5 says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not he called the light day and the darkness he called night and for as long as it is night weep yet endures for the night until your day breaks someone pray jacob said i will not let you go you must bring a blessing that turns my nights today and he said what is your name 
he said Jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel for thou hast power with God and you have prevailed he touched the whole of his tie and he blessed him the Bible says the sun arose and he called that place Peniel for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved someone cry from the depth of your heart send the light oh God send the light oh God send the light to my spirit send the lights to my finances send the lights to my ministry is someone crying for everyone that asketh receive it send the light let it come oh god high level spiritual illumination taking away my night taking away the darkness that comes with it granting me ascendance in the spirit in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ I speak to you according to Galatians 2 verse 2. Now that revelation has come to you, I prophesy to you, go up. Amen. Go up. Amen. Rise to a higher spiritual pedestal. It says, and I went up by revelation. Now that revelation has come, I speak to someone, arise. Amen. Shine. Amen. One more time, arise. Amen. Shine. Amen. And where you have been sitting because the word of God has come with the spirit component of this revelation may it pick you from your lowly estate and elevate you in the name of Jesus Christ you hear me everything that comes alongside darkness that is represented in your life I stand in the name of Jesus by the power that raised Christ from the dead whether it is failure circles of pain closed doors all kinds of demonic things i speak to your life hold on please listen please don't miss tomorrow's service one of the things i have to teach you is how light comes the true source of light is the speakings of god the first manifestation of light in the bible is and god said the only way light comes is from what god says if you cannot find what God says, light cannot come. Let's leave that for tomorrow. I'm saying that because I want to speak. I prophesied as I was commanded. Because you will only have light when it is God said. It is God that said, let there be light. Light did not just manufacture itself to come. It is the word of God that brings the light of God. Therefore, I speak as touching the voice of God over your life. Every area of darkness... I prophesy to you that light appears now. I prophesy to you that light appears now. Light appears now. Hear me. Some of you by reason of this encounter tonight, before you reach home, in the name of Jesus, the same way darkness has no power to stop light, I decree and declare may the light that has come upon you let it run faster than you to create your miracles in the name of Jesus Christ the season of shame and reproach the season of tragedy and pain the season of men asking where is your God in the name of Jesus the light that comes upon your life now let it produce potent results hallelujah my heart will not let me rest until I do this in every gathering of people please no movement Jesus said while I am in the world I am the light of the world that any man who walks by me will not stumble there are some of you who were sent by God more than an invitation to this conference you're here inside in the overflow outside and then many following online whilst you heard me speak listen carefully the spirit of god began to convict you that for you you have not even passed through the door hallelujah now you can stand 
outside of a man's house and get a bit of illumination to see but the man can give you an invitation to enter where you can sit down with honor and have light when the Shunammite woman was preparing a room for Elisha they put a table and they put light for him to have unlimited access there is greater light when you are in the fold please listen to me ladies and gentlemen the business of coming to Jesus is not just a church thing the only basis for having true light now in this life and even afterwards is Jesus a man of God cannot give you new life on his own he can only lead you the Bible says in John 1 6 that John was not the light himself he only came to bear witness to the light is that true he was not the light but that he came to bear witness to the light that through the efficiency of his witness they might believe the next verse says he was not that light he was sent the only reason why we emanate that light is because we carry within us the true light himself I'm going to make an altar call two calls in one there's someone here who came to church and you are saying apostle thank you for talking about this because I've come to the end of my life I confess that I need Jesus sincerely I've heard the fathers talk about this Jesus I've been around the things of Jesus but I want to make a genuine sincere decision number two there are those who are saying apostle I cannot even say if I'm a Christian right now because my life has gone haywire I speak to you like the prodigal son the father did not come and meet the son in his mess he had to take responsibility to leave that place and start moving the Bible says to draw nigh to him and he will draw nigh to you. You must indicate interest in the things of God. I'm going to make this altar call counting one to five. Wherever you are, if you are following from across the globe, I'm sure connecting across the social media space, there will be room there for you to let us know that you just made Jesus your Lord and Savior. But for those who are here, you see the things of the kingdom does not require force on your own part nobody will put it make it a compulsion but let me tell you the truth one day when this life is over it is only those who have paid the price and shown interest in receiving that light that will have eternal redemption wherever you are Jesus is giving you a chance right now I lend my voice with the angel over this house and all the vessels of God to usher you into this experience hallelujah I count one to five. I want you to leave your seat and run like there's fire on the mountain. Come and stand right here. I begin my counting now. <laughs> Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. Two. Are you running? Celebrate them. Run to Jesus. Win that war finally, once and for all. Calling all sinners. Come home, come home, come home, you who are weary, come home. The softly and tenderly Jesus is calling. And leave in your spirit till your work on earth is done come come apostle i want to come but i'm ashamed of my friend can i still come come help those under the anointing come there's nothing to be ashamed of this is the greatest miracle believe me come to jesus as many who will come to him the bible declares that he will in no wise cast away I'm still waiting for someone just a few more minutes if you're coming from outside run run come don't be ashamed don't be afraid listen to me someday we're going to stand before the king of kings and the lord of lords I will not stand as apostle Nobody will call that name on that day. No. You will not stand as a banker. It will not matter that day. 
I am a great man of God, all of that will count for dung. The only credential that will matter is your love and passion for Jesus, accepting him and the depth of your contribution to revealing him and bringing him glory. These are the only credentials that will matter. So let me encourage you in all your pursuit, separate the mundane from the eternal and focus on that which has value both in this life and in that which is to come. And I can tell you chiefest of all of them is this that has happened right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. I congratulate you, my dear brothers and sisters. You are not acting at all. Just imagine that you are standing here with Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Who is looking at me? No, that, that's not the issue. I know that we are out of time. May I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender to Jesus. You are doing this to Jesus, the son of the living God. And those who are following online, you are making this decision online. As I lead them to pray, may I request that you please make this prayer from as far as the ends of the earth. His loving arms are ever ready to receive you. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I acknowledge you as the true light. I receive you into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god i receive the gift of righteousness i receive the abundance of grace and i declare that i reign in life i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones the bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away they have come declaring your lordship over their lives and based on the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven in the name of jesus i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god i commend you therefore to the word of god and to the ministry of the spirit that you be grounded and established in righteousness i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life receive grace to live the victorious christian life in jesus mighty name i pray now please let me request very quickly there are counselors waving the placard. I just want you to please move to my left, which will be your right. They will have a word with you very quickly and you return back to your seat. God bless you. God bless you. Let's celebrate them. Thank you.